Hiawatha's wooing, as unto the bow the cord is, so unto the man is woman. Though she bends him, she obeys him. Though she draws him, yet she follows. Useless each without the other. Thus the youthful Hiawatha said within himself and pondered, much perplexed by various feelings, listless, longing, hoping, fearing, dreaming still of Minnehaha, of the lovely, laughing water, in the land of the Dakotas. Wed the maiden of your people, warning, said the old Nokomis, go not eastward, go not westward, for a stranger whom we know not. Like a fire upon the hearthstone is a neighbor's homely daughter. Like the starlight or the moonlight is the handsomest of strangers. Thus dissuading spoke Nokomis, and my Hiawatha answered only this. Dear old Nokomis, very pleasant is the firelight, but I like the starlight better. Better do I like the moonlight. Gravely then, said old Nokomis, Bring not here an idle maiden, Bring not here a useless woman, Hands unskillful, feet unwilling, Bring a wife with nimble fingers, Heart and hands that move together, Feet that run on willing errands. Smiling, answered Hiawatha, In the land of the Dakotas Lives the arrow maker's daughter, Minnehaha, laughing water, handsomest of all the women i will bring her to your wigwam she shall run upon your errands be your starlight moonlight firelight be the sunlight of my people still dissuading said nokomis bring not to my lodge a stranger from the land of the dakotas very fierce are the dakotas often is there war between us there are feuds yet unforgotten Wounds that ache and still may open. Laughing answered Hiawatha, For that reason, if no other, I would wed the fair Dakota, That our tribes might be united, That old feuds might be forgotten, And old wounds be healed for ever. Thus departed Hiawatha to the land of the Dakotas, To the land of handsome women, Striding over moor and meadow, through interminable forests, through uninterrupted silence. With his moccasins of magic, at each stride a mile he measured, yet the way seemed long before him, and his heart outran his footsteps, and he journeyed without resting, till he heard the cataract's thunder, heard the falls of Minnehaha calling to him through the silence. Pleasant is the sound, he murmured. Pleasant is the voice that calls me. On the outskirts of the forest, twixt the shadow and the sunshine, herds of fallow deer were feeding. But they saw not Hiawatha. To his bow he whispered, Fail not. To his arrow whispered, Swerve not. To the red heart of the roebuck. Threw the deer across his shoulders and sped forward without pausing. At the doorway of his wigwam sat the ancient arrow-maker in the land of the Dakotas, making arrowheads of jasper, arrowheads of chalcedony. At his side, in all her beauty, sat the lovely Minnehaha, sat his daughter, laughing water, plaiting mats of flags and rushes. Of the past the old man's thoughts were, and the maidens of the future. He was thinking, as he sat there, of the days when with such arrows he had struck the deer and bison on the muscaday, the meadow, shot the wild goose flying southward on the wing, the clamorous wawa, thinking of the great war parties, how they came to buy his arrows, could not fight without his arrows, ah, no more such noble warriors, could be found on earth as they were, now the men were more like women, only used their tongues as weapons. She was thinking of a hunter from another tribe and country, 
young and tall and very handsome, who one morning in the springtime came to buy her father's arrows, sat and rested in the wigwam, lingered long about the doorway, looking back as he departed. She had heard her father praise him, praise his courage and his wisdom. Would he come again for arrows to the falls of Minnehaha? On the mat her hands lay idle, and her eyes were very dreamy. Through their thoughts they heard a footstep, heard a rustling in the branches, and, with glowing cheek and forehead, with a deer upon his shoulders, suddenly, from out the woodlands, Hiawatha stood before them. Straight the ancient arrow-maker looked up gravely from his labour, laid aside the unfinished arrow, bade him enter at the doorway, saying, as he rose to meet him, Hiawatha, you are welcome. At the feet of laughing water, Hiawatha laid his burden, threw the red deer from his shoulders, and the maiden looked up at him, looked up from her mat of rushes, said with gentle look and accent, You are welcome, Hiawatha. Very spacious was the wigwam, made of deer skin dressed and whitened, with the gods of the Dakotas drawn and painted on its curtains, and so tall a doorway hardly Hiawatha stooped to enter, hardly touched his eagle feathers as he entered at the doorway. Then up rose the laughing water. From the ground fair Minnehaha laid aside her mat unfinished, brought forth food and set before them. Water brought them from the brooklet, gave them food in earthen vessels, gave them drink in bowls of basswood, listened while the guest was speaking, listened while her father answered. But not once her lips she opened, not a single word she uttered. Yes, as in a dream she listened to the words of Hiawatha, as he talked of old Nokomis, who had nursed him from his childhood, and as he told of his companions, Chibayabos the musician, and the very strong man Kwasind, and of happiness and plenty in the land of the Ojibwes, in the pleasant land and peaceful. After many years of warfare, many years of strife and bloodshed, there is peace between the Ojibwes and the tribe of the Dakotas, thus continued Hiawatha, and then added, speaking slowly, that this peace may last for ever, and our hands be clasped more closely, and our hearts be more united. Give me, as my wife, this maiden. Minnehaha, laughing water, loveliest of Dakota women. And the ancient arrow maker paused a moment ere he answered, smoked a little while in silence looked at Hiawatha proudly, fondly looked at Laughing Water, and made answer very gravely. Yes, if Minnehaha wishes. Let your heart speak, Minnehaha. And the lovely Laughing Water seemed more lovely as she stood there, neither willing nor reluctant as she went to Hiawatha. Softly took the seat beside him, while she said, and blushed to say it, I will follow you, my husband. This was Hiawatha's wooing. Thus it was he won the daughter of the ancient arrow maker in the land of the Dakotas. From the wigwam he departed, leading with him laughing water. Hand in hand they went together through the woodland and the meadow left the old man standing lonely at the doorway of his wigwam, heard the falls of Minnehaha calling to them from the distance, crying to them from afar off, Fare thee well, O Minnehaha. And the ancient arrow-maker turned again unto his labour, sat down by his sunny doorway, 
murmuring to himself and saying, Thus it is our daughters leave us, those we love and those who love us, just when they have learned to help us, when we are old and lean upon them. Comes a youth with flaunting feathers, with his flute of reeds a stranger, wanders piping through the village, beckons to the fairest maiden, and she follows where he leads her, leaving all things for the stranger. Pleasant was the journey homeward, through interminable forest, over meadow, over mountain, over river, hill and hollow. Short it seemed to Hiawatha, though they journeyed very slowly, though his pace he checked and slackened to the steps of laughing water. Over wide and rushing rivers, in his arms he bore the maiden, light he thought her, as a feather, as a plume upon his headgear. Clear the tangled pathway for her, bent aside the swaying branches, made at night a lodge of branches, and a bed with boughs of hemlock, and a fire before the doorway with the dry cones of the pine tree. All the travelling winds went with them, over the meadow, through the forest. All the stars of night looked at them, watched with sleepless eyes their slumber. From his ambush in the oak tree peeped the squirrel Adijumo, watched with eager eyes the lovers, and the rabbit, the Wabeso, scampered from the path before them. Peering, peeping from his burrow, sat erect upon his haunches, watched with curious eyes the lovers. Pleasant was the journey homeward, all the birds sang loud and sweetly, songs of happiness and heart's ease sang the bluebird, the Owissa. Happy are you, Hiawatha, having such a wife to love you. Sang the Opichi, the robin. Happy are you, laughing water, having such a noble husband. From the sky, the sun, Minignant, looked upon them through the branches, saying to them, O oh, my children, love is sunshine, hate is shadow. Life is checkered, shade and sunshine, ruled by love, O Hiawatha. From the sky the moon looked at them, filled the lodge with mystic splendour, whispered to them, O my children, day is restless, night is quiet, man imperious, woman feeble, half is mine, although I follow, ruled by patience, a laughing water. Thus it was they journeyed homeward, thus it was that Hiawatha, to the lodge of old Nokomis, brought the moonlight, starlight, firelight, brought the sunshine of his people, Minnehaha, laughing water, handsomest of all the women in the land of the Dakotas, in the land of handsome women. <laughs>